Hi, my name is Mike Lapitan with Wonderware NorCal. Thanks for joining us for an overview on Wonderware System Platform Redundancy. In this video, I'll demonstrate how System Platform provides out-of-the-box redundancy at the client layer, the application layer, data storage layer, and device integration layer. System Platform uses an engine service to request data from the PLC and forwards that data to the HMI. Engines are also responsible for alarming and logic and script execution. Engines can be made to be a re redundant pair, and they monitor each other with a dedicated network called a redundant message channel. If a standby engine partner detects there's a problem with its partner, that automatically becomes the active engine. Engines also provide store and forward data to the Wonderware historian. If a connection is lost to the historian, the engines will continue to store and buffer the data. Once the connection is restored, the engines automatically backfill the historian, so there's no loss of data. Engines can also provide data to multiple historians, so you have redundant storage and retrieval. If an operator loses a connection to their historian, their trends will automatically fail over to the partner historian. Let's take a look at this in action. This is in touch with some out-of-the-box faceplates to monitor your active and standby engines. So right now my active engine is running on my Workshop VM1 computer, and I have a backup computer called Workshop VM2. I can see that my IO server is running on my primary server. I also have a standby server that's ready to take over in case my active is not available. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that by clicking on the force failover, bu failover button. So now I'm going to be running my IO server off of my workshop VM2 secondary server. You saw no interruption in my HMI in the real time data. And let's go ahead and take a look at this in the development environment. So we're going to start with a platform. Platform represents our computer, Workshop VM1. So I can see I've got my computer name here, Workshop VM1. I also have an IP address configured, which is going to be my dedicated network for my redundancy message channel. Next, I have an engine. And the engine is configured to store and forward the data to the Wonderware historian. So I've put my historian computer name here, which in this case, the historian is running locally on Workshop VM1. The engine is also been enabled for redundancy. So I've checked the box to enable redundancy. When I did that, it creates a backup engine, which I placed on my Workshop VM2 computer. Next, I've got a redundant DI object configured. So the redundant DI object is what provides the failover between the primary and the secondary I.O. server. So I've identified my primary and backup I.O. server. In this case, I've got a top server primary and a top server secondary. And notice that top server primary is running on an engine, as well as my top server secondary is running on an engine on Workshop VM2. And lastly, I've got my tank object. And my tank is my piece of equipment that has my level. And I've configured that to log the, to the Wonderware historian. And I've configured it to also be read from a PLC. This is where our scripts would be located, as well as my graphics for that tank. And I've dragged my tank object over to IO devices to my redundant DI object. And that's what maps the tank object and the IO to the redundant DI object. Next, we'll go into the system management console. And in the Wonderware historian parameters, I can configure a historian partner. So in each of my historians, I specify the historian name of the partner computer. So I do that in both historians. What that does is when the engines provide the data to the historian, they'll provide data now to the partner historian as well. So that gives you the redundant storage as well as the automatic trend failover that I'll demonstrate momentarily. Also under Platform Manager, we can see the services that are running on each of our computers. So I can see the state of the engines. I can stop them and force failover to the partners. So I can see the services that are running on my Workshop VM2 as well. OK, so notice that my I.O. server is now running on my secondary server. And also notice that my trend is getting data from my Workshop VM2 server. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my Workshop VM2 secondary server. So here it is. This is my secondary server. And I'm going to go ahead and unplug the Ethernet network from this server. So I'm going to click Disable. So I've, this is basically just like unplugging the Ethernet from my server. 
And I also have the redundancy message channel. So that's the dedicated network uh, for monitoring the partner status. So I'm gonna go back to workshop VM1. Notice that I've got miss, missed heartbeats on my backup server. My IO server is automatically failed over, now running on my primary. And momentarily, my trend is going to fail over from workshop VM2 to workshop VM1. So you can see right now it's momentarily paused because it lost its connection. And if we give it a few more moments, we will be out, back up and running on workshop VM1. And there we go. Now we've got our data coming in from workshop VM1. All the data is there, and that required no intervention from the operator. So in summary, System Platform provides redundancy at all levels to increase your system reliability and uptime. All this functionality is out of the box, so it doesn't require any customization or scripting, and even upgrades can be formed live, so there's no interruption to plan operations or gaps in your history. My name is Mike Lavatan with Wonderware NorCal. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please contact us at norcal.wonderware.com or 866-WONDERN.